You're listening to Law and Gospel on this June the 3rd in the year of our Lord, 2024. This is a live program as we take a look at the readings for Proper 5. That'll be for June the 9th, 20 to 24. And that'll be this coming Sunday. The Old Testament reading is Genesis 3. The epistle is 2 Corinthians 4. And the gospel is Mark 3. We're going to take a look at the gospel today. Mark 3, beginning with verse 20. Now, this occurs right after Jesus called the 12 apostles to be with him. And he sent them out to preach and have power to drive out demons. So we begin with verse 20. Now, this is Mark 3, verse 20, but this same incident is found in Matthew 12, beginning with verse 22, and Luke 11, beginning with verse 14. So, power over a demon is found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Verse 20. Then Jesus came home. Again, such a crowd gathered that Jesus and those with him could not eat. So you you can understand how busy Jesus was when he came into an area. The people had heard about many who had been healed. Now, that occurred a couple of verses uh, on top of this. There were many people who heard about everything he was doing and came to him to keep the crowd from crushing him. He told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him. He healed many. This is verse 12 of Mark three. So that all who had diseases rushed up to him in order to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they would fall down before him and yell, You are God's son. Then Jesus strictly ordered them not to tell who he was. You see, you don't want false teachers telling who you are. And that's true even today. There are pastors who will say that Jesus may be God's son, but they will not say that Jesus is God. Arius had that problem in the early church, which led to the Athanasian Creed, which many congregations confess last week, Trinity Sunday. So, a crowd gathered that Jesus and his disciples couldn't even have a quiet time to eat. Now, verse 21 is really important. When his family heard about it, they went to take charge of him because they were saying he's out of his mind. Now, who is Jesus' family? That would be 
Mary and the brothers and sisters that are named as being part of Jesus' family. So they did not believe in him. And in other words, they are saying he's out of his mind. Verse 22, the Bible scholars who had come down from Jerusalem. Now, who are these people? Well, these would be the unbelieving Pharisees and scribes. What did they say? Beelzebul is in him. Now, the name Beelzebul is another name for Satan. And therefore, they would say, the ruler of the demons helps him drive out the demons. Now, just listen to that. The ruler of the demons helps him drive out the demons? So, Jesus called them to him and pictured it to them in this way. How can Satan drive out Satan? If one part of a kingdom fights another, that kingdom cannot stand. And if one part of a home fights against the other, it can never stand. And so, if Satan rebels and fights against himself, he cannot stand, but his end has come. Now, that was Jesus in a miraculous and wonderful way, intellectually showing the ridiculous notion what the Unbelievers from Jerusalem were saying that the ruler of the demons helps them drive out the demons. He's showing that that doesn't make any sense. Because if the devil is driving out other devils, then he's fighting against himself. Verse 27. No one can go into a strong man's house and take his goods without first tying up the strong man. After that, he will rob his house. Now, what's Jesus saying there? If Jesus has the ability to drive out the demons from the devil's house. The devil is the strong man's house. And Jesus is taking away his goods. But that meant he first tied up the strong man. After that, he will rob his house. So if Jesus is able to take out demons, then what we're talking about is that the devil is being defeated. And of course, the ultimate defeat will occur at the cross when Jesus will stamp on the head of Satan the serpent and put him to death. Verse 28, I tell you the truth. Now, Jesus has that kind of language a number of times throughout the Bible. And when he starts that way, I tell you the truth, it reminds us of what he says about himself. I am the way 
the truth, and the life. So now he's going to say something that is absolutely true. And what does he say? Verse 28. Anything that people do will be forgiven. Their sins and their slanders though they slander ever so much. Wow. That's a wonderful verse. You might want to put it up on a poster in your house or at the church. All your sins and your slanders, though you slander ever so much, will be forgiven. This takes away the curse of the law, where many people think that they're going to go to hell because they have done so many bad sins. But then Jesus continues in verse 29. But anyone who slanders the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. So here Jesus is really making a distinction between those with faith who have their sins forgiven and those who do not have faith that the Holy Spirit wants to give them. They will never be forgiven. Jesus goes on. Yes, he is guilty of an everlasting sin. He said this because they had said he has an unclean spirit. Now you see, when did Jesus received the Spirit for his mission. That occurred at the baptism of John. John the Baptist had a baptism of repentance. Jesus came to him. John, if you'll recall, said, no, no, I need to be baptized by you, not you by me. But Jesus said, no, in order to fulfill all righteousness, I need to be baptized by you. Jesus underwent the baptism of repentance, not because he had any personal sins to be forgiven of, but because he was the new Israel standing for the sins of all the people and getting ready to take upon himself the punishment of the cross in order that people will be forgiven their sins who had faith in him. But if you say Jesus has an unclean spirit, which means the Holy Spirit, then you are slandering the Holy Spirit And your sins will not be forgiven. That's why we start many a worship service with a confession of sin. I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins with which I have ever offended thee and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But, and here comes the Holy Spirit, I am sorry for them, and repent of them, and pray thee of thy boundless blessing upon me. That's trusting the Holy Spirit who has given you the faith to believe the promise 
that Jesus will forgive your sins, regardless of how many they are. As he said, though they slander ever so much. When do we slander God and yet are forgiven? Every commandment we break is a breaking of the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. It's a slandering of God. But when a person repents of those sins, he is forgiven. We then move into the next section of Mark 3, entitled, The Mother and Brothers of Jesus. This section is also found not only in Mark 3, but in Matthew 12 and Luke 8. So it's very important. His mother and his brothers came. They stood outside and sent someone to him to ask him to come out. Now the crowd sitting around Jesus told him, your mother and your brothers are outside looking for you. Now it's important that they were sitting around Jesus because to sit and listen to someone was the work of hearing the word of God. So they realize his mother and brothers, there came in, sending someone in, telling Jesus to come out. This fits with verse 21. When his family heard about it, they went to take charge of him because they were saying, He's out of his mind. And this included not only his brothers mentioned in the Bible, but even Mary, his mother. So when the crowd said, your mother and your brothers are outside looking for you, Jesus responded, And he responds in a way that I think is very common in his discourse. He asks a question. Who are my mother and my brothers? He asks them. Then looking around at those who sat in a circle around him, Now, remember, those are the ones listening with great anticipation to his words, desiring not only to hear the gospel, but also to be healed. Remember, there was such a crowd. Jesus and those with him didn't even have the opportunity to eat. So Jesus looks around at those sitting around him. He said, here are my mother and my brothers. Well, that needs to be explained. And he does that in the next verse. Verse 35. If you do What God wants, you are my brother and sister and mother. What did he mean? Well, God desires that we sit in a circle around Jesus. 
and listen to him. At this time, his mother and brothers were not doing that. In fact, later on, one of his brothers became pastor of the Jerusalem church, and the family did have faith at that time. But at this time, they did not have the faith that was needed. So that's the reading from Mark chapter 3, verses 20 to 35. The other reading is from Genesis 3, 8 to 15. And what does that specifically say? This is, of course, the Garden of Eden story. At the time of the day when there was a breeze, Adam and Eve heard the Lord God walking in the garden. And the man and his wife hid from the Lord God among the trees in the garden. The Lord God called the man. Where are you? He asked him. Notice again the question. Adam answers, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. God asked him, Who told you you were naked? Did you eat some fruit of the tree I ordered you not to eat? Now, that can be confusing to some people, because we know that Adam and Eve were created as being naked. But it's clear from the Bible that at their creation, they also had a clear beam of light surrounding their body. When they sinned, that light left them. We also will have that same light when we go to heaven because we will be the blessed. What does Adam answer? Did you eat from the tree I ordered you not to eat? Well, he does it. What happens a lot of times in marriages. The woman you gave me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord asked the woman, What did you do? And she responded, The snake tricked me. The woman answered, And so I ate. So what does the Lord God say to the snake, who of course is the devil? Because you did this, Cursed are you among all the animals, tame and wild. You will crawl on your belly and eat dirt all your life. And I, and here comes the most important verse. It's the first time the gospel is mentioned. Chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. That means hatred. And between your descendants and her descendant. Now that's really important. Some translations say, and between 
your seed and her seed. Now, the problem with that translation, you don't know whether the word seed is in the singular or plural. And that's why it's better to say, between your descendants, that's the plural, referring to Satan, and her descendant, that's the singular, referring to Jesus Christ. And then we hear, he will crush your head and you will bruise his heel. That's the picture of the cross. Because at the cross, Jesus is bruised, but he still lives. He rises from the dead. But the serpent will have his head crushed and be put to death so that all believers who from the Holy Spirit have received faith have nothing to fear when the day of judgment comes because all of their sins will have been forgiven. But the devil will have been destroyed. Mark 3 and Genesis 3. Two good readings for proper five. Join us tomorrow for the hymn for this Sunday, Rise to Arms. God bless you. Listen to Law & Gospel each weekday morning at 9.30 on KFUO. For a tax-deductible gift to Law & Gospel, please make your check out to Law & Gospel and mail to Law & Gospel P.O. Box 28910, St. Louis, Missouri 63132 or call toll-free 1-877-267-1962. Views and opinions expressed on Worldwide KFUO may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you'd like to comment on programs or topics heard on Worldwide KFUO, write us at KFUO, 1333 South Kirkwood Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63122. You can also leave a question or comment on our comment line at 314-996-1542. We are the messenger of good news, Worldwide KFUO.